Welcome everyone to today's video. So there's a vintage video with this 386 here, 46. People complained that I would head crash the hard drive and also this flash thing that I had in stock wasn't the most reliable. And someone also confirmed this to that experience. So I ordered here some compact flash IDE adapter and I made a small mistake. Comparing back and forth I overlooked that this one is 44 pin laptop two and a half inch IDE and also there was a cheaper one I only realized this after ordering this and checking if this really was advertised this 44 pin two and a half inch laptop IDE thing and in fact it was not really clearly written there but I should have looked on this more closely anyway but then I saw that that for only a third of the price they have this no name without this d lock sticker so exactly the same exactly the same print out here also below the sticker and everything you get for 60 or 70 percent off if you don't order the d lock flavor here anyway so this adapter i already had in stock for many years a decade or two for this laptop hard drives so and also i have extremely vintage oh 99 maybe nearly 20 years old let's see if this still works don't even not not even sure whether this is from maybe my very first digital SLR or something. I also have a 64 megabyte or something and bigger and such, but just 10 megabyte is enough for the first DOS tests. So pin one is maybe this one. Jumper, close master, open slave. But this should be pin one, I guess, and this is also pin one here, so I guess like this. If this works reliable the next time I order something I will probably get a, a regular 40 pin with power thing because I don't usually want to use it like this. Did not solder this botch wires here very nicely. So while at it I also wanted here this botch wires change them ideally to the bottom side if possible but the pins there did not take solder very nicely, so I need to clean and solder this a little bit more nice. I only had this on the desk to pre-test that it still works. Not that after soldering I don't know at which step it broke. So let's hopefully quickly change this to watch wires there. As I said last time, this battery acid eaten, eroded stuff is not taking solder nicely. This is also why I already soldered on this side of the ferrit pearl bridge there. And so last time this was of course not ideal, I had this soldered there because on that side it wouldn't stick. And of course this ferrit pearls are for filtering high frequency noise. So but for the shortest didn't matter too much and this should be this two there yeah this is exactly this pin so this should be this and this let's see if we can solder this and also what all this YouTube battery asset videos should teach you not to store things with batteries inside because eventually they may leak and the asset may eat all the metal away it looks it looks like today it sticks with after using the wick on it. Yeah it looks like maybe now it sticks. Of course I will not leave it like this. Of course I will cut them shorter, but first a quick test that this really works, not that I cut it short and then it doesn't work. So power again. We still have post. <coughs> Do we still have keyboard? Yeah, we still have keyboard, so then we can cut the wires and put them nicely at the bottom. So, uh, this one already fell off. And this we can also 
solder so that it goes away into the right direction from here to there this is of course much nicer than what we had before if you're fancy you can clean this with alcohol or ultrasonic cleaner and also put this some spot of glue something final test also remember this is 80 stuff ground into the center this coding of this 80 connectors are usually really shitty usually just hard to press and not code it at all and keyboard and power so far post I think this should mean both work because I think one was clock and one was data as far as I remember then let's get the I.O. controller as this one was not coded here I clipped this pin off Then we have pin 1 and we also need power and let's see what happens. So here was some hard drive, auto detect, oh it found one, the megabytes that is even correct. And we will use a floppy in a moment. And what else did we have to do here? That is the drawback of not having a battery on there right now. So floppy. This is nice old-fashioned edge connectors. Floppy pin 1. As we only use license software, original Russian PTS. DOS. Non-system disk. Hmm. Ah, maybe we have the boot order. More original license software. Boot order. Ah, C A. Yeah, I see. Right again. Should of course be quite neat here to change DOS systems with a compact flash drive. But I think the keyboard error I also had this the last time and eventually when I changed some BIOS setting it disappeared so... Or it was with a battery, something like that. By the way, should we try this installation? Let's see what happens because... It's of course really pity though that um, that it's in German. So let's delete this. And once. Of course, I underestimated that we know we need to reboot the joy of this. But I think how was this? Um, this is way more reliable because before, with this other flash thing, the BIOS would actually usually hang on startup after the keyboard stuff there. Apparently not meant for such small hard drives or something because there was some there is no megabytes hmm. so much to that so for key of games so,
From what I remember that I found this overscan quite cool, but now this overscan is destroying our digital display. Due to whatever reason this first format failed, at least now it works. And it's a little bit surprisingly the floppy disk still works also so far. Actually there are network things, interestingly, any 2000. And some virus thing. Hmm. Um, I also found a backup of all DOS programs written in Turbo Pascal that I wanted to make a copy of to have it on some more modern server storage thing. Funny thing is before I made these adjustments I did not have these strange waves there. Because now we have to live with them. I have a feeling this keyboard is slightly incompatible so not only as you've seen in the last video this LEDs also behave strange. Here it stops working after booting so whatever that is in regards to PS2 AT compatibility here. It's slightly annoying though that stupid overscan. Hmm. So our programs Slightly annoying to type cut off. Wonder where those buffers everything that it reads everything forever. So that probably looks like we backed everything up with a VGA, whatever that was, MVP or HBMP, some breakout. MF is probably received. We had some serial and MIDI. Here is some MIDI game actually. I don't really remember that, but we had some MIDI transfer stuff, maybe that one, modem, whatever that was, mouse, music PCX loading, whatever that was, colors, it's probably some sending for the receiving, could also one was maybe even any 2000 or IPX, and sound blaster, chess, joystick, ad lib, some 3D, whatever that. I think at one time we started some proof of concept racing game stuff, of course, this maybe some proof of concept jump and run stuff, some IRQ testing, more MIDI lines. Not really motivated to install Turbo Pascal today, but yeah, now we have a backup and we have this more nicely soldered. I hope you enjoyed this vintage episode and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe for all the regular programming continuing soon.